the people of the internet. It is Tuesday night at exactly. Wait, Ronnie, what time do you have? Exactly 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, exactly. Thank you so much, Mr. Ronnie, for keeping us on track. It's Tuesday night, exactly 8 o'clock. So time to do what we do every Tuesday. We take over the interwebs and play all your favorite hits from the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. That's right, the 1770s, 80s, and 90s, because we are classical open mic. We're going to be playing all your favorite classical hits tonight, the exact way our forefathers did not intend, because, of course, there was no internet around. But we're so grateful to come to your homes today and be able to provide some music for you guys. Grab your favorite food, your favorite beverage, and have a great night. We hope you guys enjoy this time together. Thank you so much for having us. Let's get things started off today with a piece by American composer Leonard Bernstein, who wrote a clarinet sonata. That's actually one of my favorite clarinet pieces. It's so well written. And me and Patricia Garcia Hill, all the way out in Italy, are going to play for you guys the second movement from that sonata. So we hope you guys enjoy the Bernstein clarinet sonata, second movement.
Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did putting that together for you guys. Big shout out to Patricia all the way in Italy for putting that together with me. That is not an easy piece. She did an amazing job. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to turn things over to our director, Mark Lanson, the director of Open Classical, is going to introduce this very special next piece. Take away, Mr. Mark. Thanks, Brent. And I want to thank all of you who are supporting Open Classical with your donations to this program and everyone who has kept us in business during the pandemic, including and especially those who have donated to my birthday fundraiser on Facebook this past week. We've raised over $2,500 so far on it, and I'm going to send all who donated a personal thank you soon. It's about 50 people right now, and I'm really, really filled with gratitude. So speaking of keeping us in business, what is our business? It's to fill the holes in classical music structure that aren't being met. During this pandemic and this program, we've developed, along with so many people in the world, new ways of collaborating, creating truly musical experiences, despite not being in physical contact. That's pretty incredible. So we're gonna use those techniques even we, when we return to normal concerts. And one way is to get new music out to the public. We're gonna be using it in our new Canon project, which is a website similar to Rotten Tomatoes for classical music, where the public can weigh in on whether they would want to hear a new work again. This is gonna be shared with ensembles and audiences throughout the world, creating a global resource. So your donations are making it happen. We wanna thank you so much. Next up, we have a wonderful new work by Bolivian composer Nicolas Suarez Izaguirre. Uh, Allison Stanford and Masaru Sakuma will perform La Brisa from the song cycle Monologues of the Desert, Monologos del Des Desierto, text by Guillermo Mariaca Ituri. Uh, Allison is posting the translation in the comments, so everyone take a look there.
Thank you so much, Mark. Allison, great job. So great to hear you. Now let's keep things going now. Now we're going to go to Eric Korngold, who is an Austrian composer, very, very fantastic composer. And Nikki Nagavi and Leona Chung are going to be continuing their leader project they've been doing. And they're going to be playing a piece by Korngold called Moon, You Rise Again. Take it away, guys. Thank you guys so much. Wonderful playing. Now it's time to go to one of my favorite parts of the night, classical music trivia with the president of Open Classical, Nikola Olich and Patricia Yakich. Thank you, Brent Alicious. I appreciate your introduction. Uh, and also, Brent, happy first Father's Day to you. Uh, and everybody, welcome to the Open Classical Trivia. We have some kind people joining us this evening, some familiar faces. We have, in no particular order, Amy Bishop from WRR 101, Kelly Ball from Layla Bakery and Cafe, 
Robin from Theater Jones, David Sywalk with the Dallas Symphony, Kimberly, a dear friend of classical music and classical music organizations, and we have Patricia with Open Classical and myself from Open Classical as well. All right, and so what we're playing for tonight is uh, something okay. from Layla Bakery. So we'll play for a ten dollar gift card from Layla Bakery. And Layla <laughs> is located in Lakewood at Orm yes. and Skillman. Forum. Here we go. As always, I will be listing the options, and you can just sort of interrupt if you're comfortable and just raise your hand uh, and answer. So here we go. How tall was Sergei Rachmaninoff? Five foot eleven, six foot three, six foot six, seven foot one. Robin. <laughs> B. Six foot three? No. Nope. Six foot three? David. Six foot six. Yes. He's a tall guy. He was. Big hands, nice. too. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Big yes. hands. Yeah, yeah. Always, that was a question last time. time. David for the point. All right. Second question. Canadian pianist Glenn Gold was famous for what eccentric behavior? Oh. Improvising during a performance, falling asleep at the keyboard. Robin. Playing, performing. Humming, humming and vocalizing while he was playing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And Keith Jarrett also. That's true. And also Glenn Gold had that creaky chair he always brought with him. The, always. the one weird chair that kept... Yeah. That, and he would always cross his legs and be kind of hunched over. He traveled with, yeah. Yeah, there were lots of things. Like narrowing it down to one eccentricity. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Name nine weird things that Glenn Gold did. That should have been the question. Plus he was Maybe Canadian. that should be the sixth Already question. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, question number three. French fashion designer Coco Chanel had an affair with which famous classical composer? Robin. Igor Stravinsky. <laughs> yes, Robin's on a roll. <laughs> she wants to win that peach. <laughs> question number four. Why was the 1911 London Symphony Orchestra considered to be extremely lucky? They survived a lightning strike. They were supposed to be on the Titanic. They found gold bars in the basement of their symphony hall. Three options. Amy. I'm going to go with Titanic. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. All three of those are good, though. <laughs> I like all yeah. those Thank possibilities. You. So right. that was question number four. Question number five. First human to go into space was Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin in 1961. What classical composer did he hum over the radio during his two-hour space mission? David. Was it Shostakovich? Yes. Wow. He was a good Russian Yuri. <laughs> no one was watching. <laughs> Wonderful. That was not an easy one. How did you know that, I guess? Uh, you know, it was all part of the Soviet apparatchnik, yeah. right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not right. even Bulgarian. <laughs> Score check. So David and Robin both have two. Amy has one. Ooh. Getting really confused. All right. And we're is the next one worth two points? Or, okay. Just, or is that the second half? In that. No, for, so it, this is my last question. It's going to be worth two points, and then Patricia is in the second half, and she'll figure out the points. Okay. This was a fun one. I've been trying to do this for a while. How many... Individual notes are there in the fourth movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. <laughs> oh my God. That, like, add together all the parts? All the, yeah. yeah. So here's what I did. All the parts? I downloaded the Ninth Symphony fourth movement in MIDI file, a good one, and then I uploaded it into an analyzer that told me how many notes were there. <laughs> I oh my all God. The are, do notes that are tied across the bar line count as separate notes or one note? Oh, one note, I would think. 
<laughs> I think you better check the programming on your media analyzer. <clears throat> Let's just go with guessing and I'll, I'll get it back to everybody. So, <clears throat> fourth movement, ninth symphony. It's a long movement oh, and no. you just throw out numbers <laughs> and we'll the closest around. one wins. Yep, we'll go around. You have no idea how much fun this um, was. We'll start with Robin. <laughs> 184,212. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the number, Robin? 184,212. Dang. Okay. Who's next? <laughs> David was waiting uh, at the end. Uh, oh, Amy, did you want to go or should I go? You go. You go. I was going to say uh, 92,803. I love that everybody is so <laughs> You know, and you're looking like you're counting 48,759. Uh, I, I was guess, you know, rough count. Yeah. Okay, so we have Robin and David. Uh, Amy. 127,907. This is so much fun. <laughs> I don't know why I'm I'm dying over here. I've worked on this for weeks. Uh, Kelly, I'm gonna go big. Five hundred thousand and two. Five hundred thousand and thirty. Don't put notes in her mouth, Nicola. <laughs> don't put peaches in her mouth. Okay, uh, Kimberly. So I have no clue, but I'm just going to go on the lower end of the scale. And I'm going to say. Wait, before you say, right? make it like the price is right. Go with one. I just, I just want to do 50,000. Just 50,000 for Kimberly. Yeah. All right. 50, so, so we have everybody, Robin, David, Amy, Kelly, and Kimberly, and that's it. I'm looking at the screen. Okay. So the answer is crazily close to some of you, 95,518. And the closest is David. You were 92,803. So close. Yeah. Wow. I was wow. counting quickly in my head. He does, you know, he <laughs> has a math degree. <laughs> True story. <laughs> He has so, a so he was degree? just adding them up. Yeah, he does. I was just, I was I just getting them up. He was just adding them up real fast. I could see David doing the math like yeah. his hands were adding it up. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got some <laughs> patchy spots in my memory of the complete score of Beethoven 9, so it was not reliable. But uh. <laughs> No, this was incredibly yeah, the, close. The bassoon Seriously, part, that was fantastic. you know, second bassoon. <laughs> the lesson learned, Nicola, you don't need a program. You just need David. Well, <laughs> the trouble is, is that you wind up with percussion in the last movement. Otherwise, it would be a lot easier to count. But all exactly. those exactly. stupid bass drum smacks and the cymbal stupid crashes drum. and the triangle tings and, <laughs> you know. All right. So the end of the first half, David has four. Robin has two. And Amy has one. Going for that peach kolache. <laughs> <laughs> this was so much fun. So that is the end of the first part. We saw the points. David is in the lead so far. We'll be back a little bit later on with Patricia and the second half of trivia, and now back to Brent. All right, let's keep the music going now. Now we got a very special performance for you by Mark Lanson's little nephew, Max Landefeld, is going to be playing the cello for you guys with Lorraine Landefeld, his amazing grandma, and they're going to be playing The Two Grindeneers by Robert Schumann. Take it away, guys.
Awesome job, guys. Thank you guys so much for that amazing performance. Thank you so much to the Lennefelds. Max, you're awesome. Keep it up, my friend. Now, we're going to go to Sarah Davis, who's an amazing soprano singer. We're so grateful that she has a performance for us tonight with Patricia Garcia Hill. And they're going to be doing a song by Clara Schumann, now Robert's wife. And uh, it, it's actually been translated, though, uh, by Mark Lanson, our director. So hopefully you guys enjoy this English translation by a piece by Clara Schumann. Take it away, guys. Thank you guys so much. Wonderful job. It's great to hear some Clara Schumann. We don't hear enough of her. She's a very fantastic composer. Thank you guys, Sarah, Patricia. Thank you guys so much. Now, we're going to keep Patricia here on stage, and her and Aliyah Fehran have been doing these segments for you guys, and they're just going to be telling you a little bit about what's going on across the pond in the music world during this time. So take it away, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. <laughs> Hello everyone, you probably don't recognize me, but I'm Patricia, or Patricia as some of you oh. know me. <laughs> and I am Alaya, as some of you know me also. <laughs> but Alaya, why are you dressing like that? Bueno. Bueno, and you? Me? Because we said that this was going to be a Baroque program and I'm dressing as a Baroque woman. Maybe I am not 100% Baroque. Patricia, Patricia, I didn't have time. I don't have an easy life, eh? I was uh, with the kids, with the dog, with yeah. the house. But you don't have kids. You don't have a dog. I don't even think you have a house. No, the truth <laughs> this is true. But I have this plant that steals me a lot of time. Eh? It's not easy to take care of, of it. It's not really happy lately. It's true. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> but did you see the did you see the details? Because they open me. Oh my god, Alaya! <gasps> Okay, give me, Mira, give me another chance. Give me another chance. In the next video, we will have Ariana Art Ensemble playing the symphony from the opera L'Olimpiade di Vivaldi. They have recorded this video during the hardest part of the quarantine when they had all their concerts cancelled. They were in London, Basel, Milano, Bologna and Palermo. 
Vivaldi was a violin virtuoso born in Venice in 1678. What? I think uh, it's difficult eh, to speak like this. Eh? With this costume, it's not easy. I will, I, I've been thinking and thinking and think a lot, eh? A lot. Do you have hours, maybe weeks? Food um, in your face? I, I, uh, listen, listen. I wanted to do something original, eh? And I remember that you spoke me about the four seasons <laughs> of the <laughs> body. <laughs> four seasons <laughs> No, don't eat it. You don't like it. You don't like it. Don't eat it. It's not edible. Patricia, Patricia, now you look a little bit like uh, Telemann, no? After a wood party, hard party. <laughs> I don't know anything about Telemann. <laughs> don't say that. I think we are recording. We have champignon. Don't worry, because now you are going to listen something really nice, really amazing. Telemann Concerto in D major for two trumpets, two hobos, two violins, viola, and continuo, with musicians from uh, Theresia Orchestra, which is an amazing project, amazing orchestra, full of amazing musicians.
So, in the last video, we will listen to the flute quintet from Academia Gerardeschi di Pistoia, here in Tuscany, playing one of the five concertos for five flutes by Joseph Baudin de Boismortier, a French, French Baroque composer born in 1689. Wondering, what about the name? We so, have not forgotten. No. We haven't chosen a name because uh, because, because 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 I'm gonna tell you why. Because there were many beautiful possibilities. I really like the sugar mummies, big girl. Yeah, very nice. Cat. You don't like it. Non più trai farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Now, Time to turn things over again to Nikola Olich, my favorite Serbian-American, and Patricia Jakic, and they're going to be doing the second round now of classical music yeah. trivia. Take it away, my friends. All right. Thank you, Brent. We are back for the second half of classical open mic trivia. And just a quick score check. David is ahead by four points. Robin has two. Amy has one. And what we are going to do on this second half is a new thing. Um, which we're calling which came first. So we will have two, two items. So one will be a musical piece. The other one will be something of historical significance. And um, you will buzz in to guess which one came first. And then there's a follow-up bonus question too for an extra point. All right. And so what we're playing for tonight is uh, something okay. from Layla Bakery. So we'll Kelly, play for a $10 gift that. card from Layla Bakery. <laughs> And Layla is located in Lakewood at Orem and Skillman. Right next to Redentus. I feel like I'm a better advertiser for Redentus than I am for my own shop because I always tell people we're right next to Redentus. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. So, so the first question, which came first, the French Revolution or Handel's Messiah? Amy? Messiah came first. Excellent. Point for Amy. And then our bonus question is, 
What year was the beginning of the French Revolution? Oh, okay. Oh, that's only what for year, Amy? Okay. What's the only beginning? Time. Oh, it's only for me? Okay, so I'll say, what year was the beginning of the French Revolution? Um, 1789? Yes! Correct. Was it really? <laughs> yes. Nicely done. <laughs> awesome. All right, so then which came first, the beheading of Henry VIII's second wife or William Byrd's My Lady Novelle's virginal book? Ooh. Yeah. Well, David, David and then Robin. Oh, I'm going to guess that the uh, beheading of uh, Anne Boleyn happened before. Yes, exactly. So too. But and you also got the second bonus question, which was, what is the name of Henry VIII's <laughs> second wife? <laughs> I wonder why that wasn't there. <laughs> so two points for David. Quick score check. David has six. Robin has two. Amy has three. All right, third question. Which came first, Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake Ballet or the 16th president of the United States. Jeez. Kelly? <laughs> the 16th president of the United States? Yes. And who was the 16th president oh, of the geez. United States? <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't know. Abraham Lincoln? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so final question, which came first? Black Tuesday, or also known as the Great Stock Market Crash in the US, or Puccini's Turandot? Robin? Turandot was first. Oh. Yes, exactly. Robin gets a point. And then what year did Puccini die? Oh. I was gonna. I was already with October 1929. Um, that's not right. So um, I'm gonna go with uh, 1929. <laughs> I nope. think that's too late. The year was 1924. So wow. he died before it was actually wow. finished. <laughs> wow. No, I was off by ten years what? later. <laughs> yeah. Two, yeah. Two, um, five years later. Sorry. Two wow. years later. Two years later. Okay. All right, so. What's the situation? David is the winner. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Right, hold a peach kolache in front of me and. And knowledge your brain arrived. starts working. <laughs> well, thank you, Patricia, and thank you, Kelly and Layla's Baker. Thank you, Patricia, and thank you, everybody. This is really a lot of fun. Oh, thank thanks. you. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Back to Brent. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right, let's get back to music. All right, so now we're going to have the second string quartet by Alexander Bourdin. We're going to do the third movement for you guys, and we're going to have a great quartet for you guys. We're going to have Nicholas Baker on violin and Kristen Harvick as well on violin, and then we're going to have Mark Lanson on the viola and Jeff Harvick on cello. So you guys take it away. Enjoy this performance of the Bourdin second string quartet.
All right, great job. Thank you guys so much. Now, something a little bit different. A composer who's not well known outside of the band world, Morton Gould, is a very, very good American composer. And he wrote a, a gift, actually, for Benny Goodman on his 60th birthday. It's called Benny's Gig. And it's for clarinet and string bass. And I'm going to be playing this with my very good friend, Robert Marufo. We're, it's eight movements. We're only going to do two movements tonight. We'll do the other movements in the coming weeks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this performance by Morton Gould. It's called Benny's Gig for clarinet and string bass. First two movements.
you guys enjoyed that performance by a not so well known composer, Morton Gould. But if you do like it, look him up. He's got some very fantastic work, specifically band works. Really, really good composer. Anyways, let's go on now to a guitarist, Ming Huang, all the way out in Seattle. He's been playing for us almost every week, and he's so fantastic, so grateful. He's got another performance for you guys today. It's called Allegretto from Opus 51 by Mauro Giuliani. Take it away, Ming. Thank you so much, Ming. Great job, as always, my friend. Now we're going to go to New York, and let's hear from our good friend Carla Lopez Special. It's a very fantastic mezzo from New York, and she's going to be doing a piece by Anton and Dvorak. Take it away. Thank you so much, Carla. All right. Last performance tonight. 
it's always sad when we get to this point, but we got a good one for you guys. We've got Sarah Rodriguez is going to be doing a Biore by some guy named J.S. Bach. If you haven't heard from him, I haven't either. But hope you guys enjoy. I hear he's a good composer, and it's from his Partita number one. Take it away, Sarah. All right, Sarah, wonderful job. And so, it's another awesome Tuesday night here for us at Classical Over Mike taking over the interwebs every Tuesday night at exactly 8 o'clock, playing their favorite hits from the 1770s, 80s, and 90s. My name is Brent Boami. I was your host. Hope you guys enjoyed this night. We're so grateful that you allowed us to come in your home and, and bring some music to you guys. We hope that it was a nice respite from all the craziness going on in the world. We'll be back next Tuesday. I want to say thank you so much to Mark Lanson, our director, and Nicola and Patricia for doing the amazing trivia, and to everyone who performed and listened tonight. Thank you guys so much. We can't do this without you guys. We hope you'll tune in next Tuesday. Until then, wash your hands, be healthy, stay safe. Can't wait to see you next Tuesday.